So tonight, I want us to take one verse that we often read it. We are selective in the application. And that's Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 1. It's an amazing verse. You already know it just by quoting it. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Excellent. You see, this is where the problem is. The problem is, so far, so good. But that's not really what the verse is saying. Because what people have done is, they've taken that verse, they do whatever they want to do, and then say, well, I'm under no condemnation, I'm in Christ Jesus. They use the verse as a cover-up for careless living. They use the verse as a as a repellent for those who want to criticize them. Why are you condemning me? The Bible says there's therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Yes, you are in Christ Jesus. You see, again, that's not what the verse is saying. Like I started before, you've read it, but you are not paying attention to the part of the verse that qualifies the first part. It says, There is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. In other words, if you do not walk according to the spirit, there's condemnation for you, even though you are in Christ. That's what the verse is saying. It says, because when you walk in the spirit, there's no condemnation. You walk in love, in self-control. Walking in the spirit doesn't mean walking sanctimoniously. It doesn't mean you talk with a low voice. No. It's already been described in Galatians chapter 5. It says the works of the flesh are manifest. It listed them. If you see someone walking in the flesh, that's what it is. Then it says the fruit of the spirit is this. That is it. What does it mean walking in the spirit? It means walking by the fruits of the spirit. It doesn't mean going everywhere and temple that the Holy Ghost revealed to you. I saw in a dream. And then you want to have a very serious, holy-looking face. You don't smile, you don't go out, you don't attend functions. You're just in the spirit all the time. And that word, you know, I say, people, you are in the spirit. That is a wrong application of spiritual words. How do you know someone is in the spirit? By looking at the person. So when Jesus, and that's the problem, is that Jesus, when they looked at him, they never thought he was in the spirit. Because they said, how can this man, if he's of God, or not else, if he's of the spirit, how come he's interacting with sinners and publicans? eating food that sinners have invited him to come and eat, attending the house of, of Zacchaeus, a sinful man. To them, Jesus was not in the spirit. But being in the spirit is not what you do or say. It's the state of your heart in relation to the application of the fruit of the spirit. It says it is love. You may be a very decent person, but you don't have love. By the scripture, you are not walking in the spirit. It says self-control. You, you don't have self-control. It just takes a little thing and you explode. You are not in the spirit, even if you are a leader in church. When you start assessing who is spiritual by the fruit of the spirit, you will stop making mistakes. Spiritual doesn't mean that you sing well, you preach well, you carry yourself well in church, or you go around preaching. All of those are ministerial things you do. But in terms of you as a person, If you want to be in the spirit, it is the fruit of the spirit. Gentleness, peace, patience, kindness, self-control, love. You can list nine of them, can't you? That's the fruit of the spirit. And the verse now says, those who do not walk by that are condemned. If you don't walk in hatred, you're condemned. If you don't have self-control, your lack of self-control will condemn you on earth. People will deal with you. Even where you work, go and exercise lack of self-control. They will dismiss you from work. You will pay the price. That is a form of condemnation. But when you operate in the spirit, you don't need to fear anything. There is therefore now no condemnation. Which means you can be walking under condemnation. Even though you are a child of God. Why? The fruit of the spirit is not manifesting your life. You don't even value it. You give excuses why you cannot do it. It says gentleness. Why are you a rough person? Oh, that's just my nature. Of course, that's why you keep getting condemnation. And you want to justify being rough by the fact that people provoke you. 
And the moment you start doing that, God lives your life. Oh, God doesn't struggle. In Genesis, scripture says, my spirit, God, God saw how man was really stubborn. You know what God said? He said, my spirit will not strive with man. I leave him. God will struggle with you. He tells you this is what the Bible says. You don't want to do it. You keep arguing. You keep justifying. Don't go there, you go. Don't talk like this, you talk. Don't eat like this, you eat. Don't behave like this, you behave. Oh, no, no, no. The usher provoked me. A time will come. God will say to you in the spirit, I will not strive with you. Since you think my word is that which you can disobey because you claim people are offending you. If God were to interact with you based on offense, he would have even killed you. Do you know how much you're offending? It is for those who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. The key thing we must take from this verse is that walking in the spirit is our only guarantee to live a life above condemnation. Do you know when a human spirit doesn't have condemnation? Now, it did not... Cond- <laughs> walking in the spirit doesn't mean walking without sin. Don't mix them up. This is not the level of your holiness. This is the level of your acceptance of God and your endeavor to prioritize God and to put the fruit of the spirit above everything else in your life. So even when you fall short, you stand up and aim at it. That's what scripture said. David had a perfect heart. But David didn't have a pure heart. You and I know David, don't you? He says, what? He says, I have found in Jesse, in David, the son of Jesse. Listen. A man after my own heart. Who will do everything I've commanded him to do. You didn't hear that? God's judgment, not judgment, yeah, assessment of David was based on two things. David he says, David is after him, God. And two, David will obey him. He never spoke about David like about Abraham. Abraham says, Abraham is my friend. He's different. He says, David is a man after my own heart. That means when you see him, even in his mistake, he is seeking after me. Even when he makes a mistake, he's coming back to me. His heart is me. And that people like that, they may not be perfect and pure, but you, they love God. Even when they make a mistake, you, you, you know that in that mistake, they love God. And they are seeking how God can deliver them and make them better. That's what God is looking for. He says, a man after my own heart, who will fulfill all that which I command him? Second thing is, David is a man. All he needs, what does God want me to do? And he does it. Because you can be very holy, but very disobedient to God. Thank you.